Stoker. All right, that's something you might like that. All right, guys. So this is a review of the Stoger A30. This is a 177 caliber, brake barrel, spring powered, okay, um, air rifle with a 3 by 9 by 40 adjustable optical scope. You don't know what the AO stands for. That has to do with your front end here for setting your yardage, for focusing in at different yardages, etc. Okay, and of course you do have a focusing eyepiece as well as your zoom. And we're sitting at about probably seven and a quarter on the zoom anyways, rough estimate. Um, now, the gun does have a um, slot cut out in the receiver for the scope mount because there is a Allen screw on this scope mount at the back called a scope stop screw. And you must make sure that you get that screw as centered as possible in that slot. Once you do, you can then finish tightening these things up. So I would just tighten up the bracket just enough so that the scope can stay on the gun but slide free enough. And then you turn that screw down a couple of turns until it starts to bite the edges. And then you center it as best as you can. And what I would advise to keep pressure proper and even is start at the back or the front, doesn't matter. I always go to the back, I'm left-handed, okay? So I go to the back, very back screw, front screw, this screw near the back, and then this screw near the front. And I keep doing that until it's snug. Now, you're gonna have to remove the scope from the mount. The scope does come pre-mounted on the mount from the factory. Why, I don't know, because you do have to lock down that screw. And the only way you're getting at it is to remove the scope, which means you got to re-square up the scope yourself. All right. Now, there's some talk on the internet on some reviews I read um, where a person had said, well, Stoger, they sight in all their guns for the iron sights and the scopes. No, they don't. No gun manufacturer does that. It's impossible because they don't even know what pellet your particular gun is going to like because you can take a thousand of these A30s and you might find a couple that might run the same pellet exactly the same way, okay? And your accuracy depends upon you as well as the shooter and your scope settings. Now, you can't dial in just any pellet you feel like. It's not going to work. Every gun chooses its pellet or pellets that it will run at top accuracy the best without changing the settings is the idea, okay? Changing your yardage, sure, we're at 18 yards right now. That's, I've walked it out and I've checked it against the scope and it's pretty accurate as far as, you know, when you dial things in. Because you want that clearest possible sight picture, you got to watch your focus ring, you don't over focus. Because you need to see your crosshairs completely solid, especially right in the very middle where they're the thinnest. Because if they start to ghost, you're bad, not the scopes, okay? So you're going to have to recompensate and readjust until you... Get things settled in right. Anyways, um, I've not tried the gun with iron sights, but I'm sure that considering the quality of them, and they are fiber optics, they'll probably work extremely well, okay? But I'm a scope guy these days. Although I got a couple iron sight guns kicking around, and I'm still trying. I mean, I used to be, you know, deadly accurate when it came to iron sights, and I thought scopes were cheaters. Now I'm getting much older, and scopes are wonderful. So... But I still do the odd shooting with open sights. Anyways, there are four screws on each band that must be locked down, and it's a sequence. You've got to do it basically in an X pattern. So pick your X the way you're going to go, and you've got to keep an even amount of space as possible on the sides too. So it still leaves a gap, and you do not want to over tighten these brackets, but you don't want them loose either because that's a big problem. Okay, so you want to make sure they're snug, snug but don't reef the daylights out of them. <clears throat> but do, by all means, reef on these screws fairly tight, okay? Because you're gonna need to. And then when you turn, got that locked in, then you can turn your scope stop screw down, and you go until it stops, and then about a three quarter of a turn past that should be more than adequate in order to keep this sucker super tight. Now, they do give you the Allen key, of course, to do all that. There are Allen key screws in the front of this thing and a star screwdriver in the back, or Phillips, okay? They don't give you tools for that. you got to come up with your own. So it kind of surprised me that they went with Allen screws for the front, so you're going to have to get yourself a set of Allen keys, either metric or SAE. I haven't checked which ones they are yet. 
um, in order to make sure that these are snug. And I would probably say about every 500 shots, check them. Because if they start getting loose, that can throw off your accuracy. Any hoots. So I did an accuracy test on this gun already, so do check my channel for the Stoger accuracy test. Um, and this thing with pointed Crossman Premier pellets at 7.4 grain will do a below dime size grouping in the, in the bullseye. That is super impressive. Okay, especially considering I'm using a kid's drum thrown as a rest right now. And it's kind of a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And you got to try and keep it as stable as you can. I'm definitely putting a bipod on this thing. So i got to go out and buy another bipod mounting kit. Because I ran out of um, the threaded nut and screw style. So I'm going to put one of those on this. And then we'll mount a bipod and do more accuracy testing down the road. In the meantime, um, it does have a two-stage adjustable trigger that the adjuster does work. Yes, it's not a fake actually works and I did loosen it up about a half turn roughly which made a world of difference okay Stoger says for most shooters they won't need to even touch it but in my case I touched it because I found I needed to and that half turn made a world of difference okay uh, at least for me for you it might be different but you can also shorten the throw too for a crispier let off but when you loosen it it creates more of a first stage okay so you've got more room before it hits in to release and uh, so that's how I have it set up anyways I have my wife here with me too <laughs> and this is kind of like a sort of a collab video in a sense I got her to put some rounds through the gun to see what she thought of it as well um, but we'll get to her this is a also a carbine rifle okay it's got a shorter than normal barrel length on it it's actually the the actual barrel length is about 16 and a half inches roughly from the actual breech to the physical muzzle tip now this front also does go in about a half an inch with this cup shape so you can't count that as the part of your barrel because the muzzle is where the business end ends okay so you got to count from that spot to the breech and like i said it's about that length um, the scope is actually a twin by the way in every way to the uh, Crossman center point scope that comes with your Benjamin Classic 22 rifle. There's some ribbing back here that you'll find here and on the focusing uh, the zoom. That part is identical. This part is identical for the turrets in every way. Okay, the mount is the same mount from what I can tell. I didn't look as far as the little fancy cutout part, but otherwise same general mount. The only thing that Stoger changed were two two little things that is definitely a good thing to change to avoid getting in trouble um, is they added 200 300 then infinity the center point on my Benjamin is 200 yards and then infinity and there ain't much of a turn between 200 and 300 yards so it's kind of like okay well whatever this thing will also dial down as minimal of 10 yards all right you can also take off the front ring and put on a sunshade Sunshades you kind of need to buy it on Amazon really you just buy the sunshade according to the Front diameter of your scope and they should just screw on they're all the same standard threads for scopes from the looks of things So I'm going to be ordering sunshades for all my scopes Because um, it can get awful sunny in the front yard shooting, but um, Anyways, they changed the ribbing as well here Okay, because the ribbing is the same at the back here and the front very front on the cr on the center point So they changed that so otherwise, it's the same scope. And you know, it's a beautiful scope. All your adjustment pieces and your turrets are very tight, okay, which is good. You don't want loose, right? So they are very tight, which is good. The scope holds zero absolutely great, fantastic, okay? We're going to try and avoid that perfect word, so I'm using those words because they actually mean something. Um, cocking effort is very minimal. I don't know the exact poundage, but she had no problem cocking the gun. Um, it's pretty much, I would say it's, for, to me, I feel that it's a little stiffer than my Benjamin Classic 22, which also has a very long throw, um, but it's also a long barrel, but it still has a long throw either way compared to this. You do have an automatic safety that will automatically put the gun in safe when you cock it. No accidental misfires are allowed. Nothing's going to happen here. Neat little safety idea. Okay, and then you just make sure you remember to push it in so you can fire. Otherwise, you ain't firing nothing. Um, I did try Crossman um, Hollow Point 7.9s through this without any scope settings. 
again check that accuracy video and you're gonna find that it wasn't so good okay so the gun actually does choose the pellet and right now it has chosen those pointed 7.4 grains as its ultimate pellet we'll see how well it does with the predator polymags um, that I ordered in now I'm not going to recommend any under 500 feet per second air gun for pest control because I do have experience doing that and yeah it's not a good choice but I had no choice it's the only gun that was given to me to do it at the time um, I didn't have a pellet gun uh, for probably about three months at that point and I had to do some pest control on the property for uh, the one landlord we had at the time and uh, yeah it just it's not a good idea um, 22 cal yeah at you know 460 440 even 400 feet per second is pretty good for for that and some small game but not 177 cal so I'm not going to recommend you try uh, pest control with this uh, although there are people who must try um, the box says that this thing runs at 495 well you really shouldn't have any reliance on a company that says the words at 495 because that has been proven many times to be a myth okay every spring gun and nitro gun for sure will definitely run really hot um, until they break in and the dieseling effect is gone okay and this one is pretty much dieseled out um, we've got close to about 200 rounds into this thing now and um, you only have to lube the thing actually uh, with a couple of drops of silicone chamber lube down the, uh, the inlet hole here so you got to cock the gun and lube it that way uh, every thousand shots according to the manual which is pretty good because some of the air guns you got to do them about what every 200 shots or yeah. 300 shots once every thousand I'm in saves me a lot of money on friggin <laughs> silicone chamber lube um, now it does have a very robust stock and I do mean robust and thick so you know if you've got very small hands this might be a bit of a problem for you but if your hands are like medium to large mitts then too easy I don't um, have any problems. Her, her hands aren't like massively huge uh, compared to mine so I mean I'm a little bit longer I got about an inch on her uh, on most of my fingers but our thumbs seem to line up hey yeah. high five <laughs> um, and she doesn't have any problem with the gun so oh. you know a girl can do this um, but anyways I want her to give her opinion on what she feels about the gun as far as how it kicks and um, how she finds it for shooting okay she did shoot a target and she needs yeah. a lot more practice but it's every gun we we pick differently we got to practice with that gun to get really good with it so what are your initial findings on this for you okay I put about seven shots through it just to try it out and um, it was really pleasant to shoot it was easy to cock I like the uh, knurling on the front uh, muzzle area there when you grab it to cock it it is a positive traction so uh, I really uh, I really like the gun I like the weight of it um, <clears throat> it's not too big it's not too heavy <clears throat> I think the uh, uh, documentation said something about seven pounds this gun is about seven and that's that's great um, when you pull the trigger there is a kick because it is a spring um, but it is not pronounced it's not excessive so um, it was fairly easy to use and I think with more practice I'll get better at uh, the aiming part uh, but just taking those seven shots, it was it was a fun gun to yeah, use. She does shoot with two eyes open, so yes, it's a little bit more challenging than you know closing an eye, but she can't, so cause her yeah. eyes are that messed up. But <laughs> she does exceptionally well. I mean, come on, she she kicked my my my, my tush uh, pistol shooting. Yeah, well, pistols are my that's, specialty. That's her specialty. <laughs> Mine's rifles, right? Um, but she really does an awesome job shooting with two eyes, even with open sights on pistols. So. But I really like that gun. That is, I, I'm, I'm not a pistol person per se, but that is a nice rifle. No, you're, you I'm, are a I'm pistol. Not, I am a pistol. 
Sorry, I'm not, not, a, rifle I'm not a rifle person. Look at that, that built-in nice... bloopers, guys. Don't you love that stuff? I love it. But that is a nice rifle. Um... Now, <laughs> this thing sells for $350 retail at Canadian Tire. There are a few other places in Canada you can get it. Um, I actually found one on Cabela's for $250 which I think is an awesome price. It's on sale right now, by the way, at Canadian Tire for $270 something. And in July, it is going to be on sale for $224.99, which yep. I think is an outstanding price because that's 25 bucks cheaper in Cabela's. And you can have it and have it right now. You don't have to wait in the mail. Um, but even at $270 at Canadian Tire, I think that considering you may or may not be paying shipping at Cabela's, I didn't try adding it to the cart to see, um, I think even at $270 is, is a really good price for this gun, very reasonable, but I think $350 is absolutely ludicrous because that's $100 above retail of everybody yeah. else. So we do know the Canadian Tire can be it's very expensive much. on their guns at times, so wait till they're on a really good sale price. They're trying to make up for all that Canadian Tire money that they give you. <laughs> Which is very minimal at I know it's very minimal It now. used to be good. You could get rich fast, like yeah. $7 well, now for now they're every getting rich fast. Now it's like $0.07 <laughs> cents for every 100 bucks. You know, like, come on, really? Seriously? <laughs> they need to lower their prices. Yeah. The quality of this gun, though, is freaking nice. cool. Yeah. It is really well machined. The bluing is beautiful. Everything. And carbine is cool, too. Um, the stock is really nice checkering on it and, you know, everywhere where you need it. It's just yep. nice. There, there, Even there. with the yep. cocking handle yep. up top, it's, it's checkered and, you know, so you you got a good grip if your hands get sweaty. I like the little cutout they did yeah, on the, the butt stock. Butt <laughs> this should save your shoulder. <laughs> well, comfy. it's not that kind of kick, but yeah, it's, it's very it's comfy. comfy. And it is an ambidextrous shot uh, gun, so whether you're left or right-handed, and it doesn't make a difference on the cheek piece. Cheek piece is you know, awesome. so so that's actually really good. Dual side. Um, yep. The trigger is is nice and, and it's not overly wide. It's not too narrow and it does have some nice groove tracks in there for gripping your finger with too. Especially again if you have sweaty fingers, some people do. Mm -hmm. um, it's starting to rain. We got to yes, wrap this up soon. Um, but I think as far as the 270 price tag at Canadian Tire, it's definitely worth driving the gun. This thing is extremely accurate. If you watch that accuracy video, um, this thing is extreme accuracy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're looking for extreme, this thing's got it. Uh, if you're looking for comfort of feel, it's not too heavy. The carbine uh, with the shorter barrel makes it a lot nicer too. Um, you can shoot open sights or not. I didn't bother with the open sights at all. Like I said, I'm a scope guy. Very easy to break. Yeah, very easy to break too. Um, probably a good size gun for teenagers and women, of course, men as well. Um, mm -hmm. And if you don't have a lot of, you know, then this thing is not a big deal. I mean, yeah. this is so easy. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll take my pinky and I can cock this thing. I mean, you know, yeah. it, it's really, really good, guys. Um, so very impressed with the gun. Now, where do I put this as far as the star rating goes? I, I'm actually, seriously, um, this is my first experience with Stoger guns. But I've done some homework, and there was, when I was checking this gun out on YouTube, there was virtually next to nothing for this particular gun. I mean, I, I found two videos on it uh, on the app, uh, YouTube app on the phone. Both of them were totally pointless and useless videos. Because um, you also never try and do an accuracy test on a gun that's fresh out of the box. It's dieseling, so mm -hmm. it's not going to be that accurate anyways. It's got to settle it's in. It's got to break in, yeah. Yes. And the other video, um, the guy was like, had it sitting like this, and he just, you know, I don't even know if there was a pellet in it, but he shot it. But you couldn't even hear half the conversation when he was trying to tell us about it. I later checked it home on the computer, researched the gun again on YouTube. I think I came up with maybe two other videos, maybe three also pointless videos so I thought well I mean I review everything I buy anyways um, and um, I thought, well I'm gonna spend some time with this and I have and I put a few hundred rounds through it mm -hmm. which gives me more than enough time to, to say okay if this is thing is good or not um, and I am I am totally impressed with this gun okay totally impressed uh, the other difference you find too between this scope and uh, the one with the uh, center point that you know being identical they give you these caps on this scope on the Stoger, where you've got flip-up caps on the Benjamin Classic, um, which either way, you've got dust covers to protect. Um, I've never tried shooting with these covers on because they are clear, so you should be able to shoot with them. 
Yeah. Um, One's tinted too. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say don't because it's all foggy and bleh. Yeah, well, it's so. an extra layer. Yeah. So, yeah, optics. yeah, yeah. Definitely don't try uh, shooting with these caps on. They ain't going to work for you. Um, so, I don't know why they ever go one yellow, one clear, but whatever. I don't really care. Um, but I, I would say the overall rating, um, being fair and everything, um, you got to buy it on sale if you're buying it from Canadian Tire. Yeah, don't the pay The warranty, retail. by the way, before I forget, the warranty from Stoger on the box says two years. Canadian Tire's website, when you scroll, well, up the page to the bottom, um, actually says it comes with a five-year repair-only warranty through Canadian Tire. So they're actually going above and beyond um, Stoger on this one. And uh, I thought, well, that's pretty cool for five-year repair only. Now, I don't know how many months it's going to take before you ever see your gun again, but at least you've got a five-year repair only warranty. So there is no over-the-counter exchange warranty on this gun. Some of their warranties are different depending on the gun. That was yeah. extremely different to see from them, uh, something new. But um, I'm going to have to be fair with this. And as per sale price at $270, um, and of course, two twenty four all day long is an awesome deal for price, but never paid the three fifty. No. It ain't worth three hundred and fifty dollars this gun by any means. Um, but I, I would have to put my star rating somewhere around I'm I am i am a four and a half out of five. I was gonna say four and a quarter, four and a half. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I would say four and a half is where I'm going to put this thing. It is deadly accurate, especially with the right pellet. It is very deadly, as you'll see from the accuracy test video that I did. <laughs> I thought, and that's just resting it on a drum throne. I mean, come on, that's like, you got a lot of this going on, and you, you got to try and stay stable. Setup, you're you get a bipod, you're going to be even better. You know, and under dime size grouping doing with this drum throne, that was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, that's the only exception. gun that ever did that well before for me, ever, in a 177, was my Crossman 1077 that she bought me when we got married. <laughs> and I put, like, way more than a quarter of a million rounds through that thing, rebuilt yeah. it about a half a dozen times or more. Um, I actually kicked myself for selling that gun now that I think about it. But I do have another one, but I do have to replace some parts on it before it'll shoot straight. Um, but And that's a CO2 rifle. I mean, that's not even... You know, that thing runs close to five. Now, as far as one more thing I better mention, then we're gone, okay? Um, they say at 495. They couldn't be more correct. It actually will get at 495 with a 7.4 grain pallet. Um, until the dieseling stops, it's going to be up and down. It's going to run pretty hot. So, you know, we got crony results. So if you check out the unboxing in crony, you'll find out all the results with all the different pellets we've tried. Well, it was dieseling. Yeah, yeah. well, it was dieseling. Um, it's pretty much settled in now. Um, I'm going to have another crony video on this and another accuracy video using the Predator Poly Mag or Poly Tip uh, pellets. Poly Mags, I guess you call them. Mm -hmm. Poly Tipped, anyways. Because um, they're like a, they're a predator hunting pellet, and I want to see how they do with no scope setting changes. Mm -hmm. And if they don't go as accurate as I want them to be, then we're sticking with Crossman pointed because those things are definitely deadly. So um, hmm. that's all we got left, by the way. I need more. I'm just saying, you know. Anyhow. <laughs> She's looking at me like, it's not like I don't have enough ammo. Yeah, but this is the ammo that runs in this gun, right? So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks, Sue, for joining me on this one. And for that nice look you gave me when I asked for more pellets. Yeah, again. <laughs> again, yes, we've gone through literally two milk cartons. Of, how many rounds do we get in those things? 1,200 or something. Like, it's big. It's like over 1,000. 1,250, I think it is. 1,250 rounds or something. We've gone through two milk cartons of those already. And, and we're still in June. There right? is there is a, an employee. At Canadian Tire. At Canadian yes. Tire. Younger guy. Pretty cool. That uh, He knows us so he well now. He sees us and he'll say, what, more pellets? <laughs> a couple times I said, no, I want another gun. On, oh, yeah, well, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I'll take some more ammo, too. <laughs> oh, and some CO2. I need a big box. <laughs> you know? We were in there the other day. He says, more pellets? No, no, no. Uh, another gun. You know? <laughs> uh, 
and we did buy more pellets too because I yeah. wanted to try out hollow points in this yeah. thing. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, we're we're definitely getting so well known. <laughs> it's too bad they don't know us well enough to say, "Ah, you don't need to fill up the logbook now for ammo." Yeah, uh, they do. Good they luck. That ain't never gonna happen. Anyways, guys, it is starting to spit out here a little yes, bit. We gotta um, get our stuff in. Hopefully, it clears back up because uh, I've got some more uh, videos to do today out here with guns and more shooting, more ammo more gone. Shooting, <laughs> shooting, more ammo gone. I think we're gonna have to make a trip to Canadian Tire and pick up another milk carton or two, and then I think we'll be okay for a month or so. Um, but um, in the meantime, do do check out the accuracy video on this, the unboxing, and the crony results. Stay tuned for the other videos we talked about. Um, I am serious. If you want a super accurate spring-powered rifle um, that is definitely running at that, you know, 495 for you know Canadian gun, um, yeah, do check into this thing because this is a sweet, sweet rifle. It looks sleek and all black. Too. Well, well, yeah, it awesome. looks mean and nasty. It's going to look even. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be even more snipery <laughs> once I get the bipod on there. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I have to pick up that kit and get that bipod on. Right now I'm sharing a bipod with a few different guns so I can get some more bipods in. But that's okay. I can only shoot one gun at a time. Yep. But, um, you know, definitely it is a really, really nice gun. I am so impressed with this Stoger. You know, that that is really good. Anyways, uh, we're out of here. I, I got <laughs> shooting to do. I got... I got other stuff to do today too with guns. So I, yeah. I'm gonna turn off the camera. Yeah, she's again. gonna have to turn off the camera. So thanks again, guys. Thanks again, Sue, for joining me with this one. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Stoger, Stoger, yeah.